Welcome to the journey. When disaster befalls us, we often by default resort to thinking that God is punishing us for something. The spread of the coronavirus, for example, has been labeled already by some Christian groups as divine punishment. And then they go on to list the categories of people that have brought this punishment upon us. Of course, any punishment inflicts suffering. And so one could therefore conclude that God punishes because God wills that human beings suffer. And then what happens? We go to the Old Testament which is full of accounts in which we are told God is a punishing God. We sometimes meet an image of a very vengeful God in the Old Testament. This is a difficult question and one that we cannot answer in simply a few minutes because for centuries theologians have interrogated this question and despite that it is one that we continue to ask when things like COVID-19 come along? I certainly don't have an answer to this question, but I want to take just a few minutes to reflect on a couple of things which may or may not be helpful. You know, the book of Job attempts to answer this question. Job suffers terribly and his friends tell him that God is punishing him. Of this, they seem very certain. And this is the way they explain away how Job suffers. And at the end of the book, we learn that it was not God who did this. Rather, the book of Job itself disapproves of this way of thought. On the other extreme, we will undoubtedly find atheists or agnostics who maintain that suffering on all levels, especially as we see unfolding with COVID-19, proves that there is no such thing as a personal God or that God is a childish superstition or simply just a fantasy. And the truth lies beyond these easy options, these explain away options. First, we must observe that God can never be construed as the cause of evil. And I say this because there are two reasons. First, a good God can never positively will wicked. In the New Testament, Jesus reveals a God who loves deeply. Think of the many accounts of him restoring health and wholeness to people. In chapter 5 of John's Gospel, when his contemporaries say that a man was born blind as a punishment from God, Jesus rejects that. And the second observation is a bit more philosophical. God is being itself and therefore can never be the ground of any evil because evil is always a lack of being or a type of non-being. But there's another reflection I also want to throw into the mix. As we look at this complicated and difficult topic, we need to reflect on us human beings. You see, when we choose not to live the law of love, we are very often the protagonists of suffering itself. When I choose to act in a selfish way and deprive my neighbor, when I choose to drive drunk and I get killed, or when I defraud my company and some people lose their jobs, these are all ways that I am the protagonist. When we exploit the natural environment and there's much evidence that points to the fact that the environment is struggling, we act against the law of love. And so we bring upon suffering on ourselves and others. We might say this is all very well, but why does God allow that? Well, C.S. Lewis and Tela de Chardin have written books, very insightful books, on this question. Christians believe that ultimately what is at stake is human freedom and God's utmost respect for that freedom. God gives us freedom and unlike the rest of created order, refuses to interfere in that, even when we think it would be beneficial for God to do so. And that leaves us in a lot of pain 
at times. But notice that it is our wayward use of freedom that is the protagonist of that pain and suffering and not God. Spiritual writer Father Ron Rollheiser ex examines this question and points out that Jesus reveals a God to us that is not so much a rescuing God but a redeeming one. A God who does not protect us from pain but instead enters into our pain and redeems it from the inside. He examines the account of Jesus' friend Lazarus and says that ultimately what we see is a God in Jesus who shares our helplessness, who shares our distress and shares our tears with no attempt to try and explain God's seeming absence but rather a trusting that because God is all loving and all powerful in the end all will be well and our pain will be redeemed in the loving embrace of God. And so before we jump to the conclusions that we sometimes do, we need to take a long and hard look at the Jesus we meet in the Gospels because they tell us a very different story. They reveal to us a God who does not punish, but a God who loves us deeply. Take some time today to maybe just look at Jesus in a few passages in your favorite gospel and notice the love that emanates from him.